I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're uncovering the secrets to a love-filled life with Kalinda Latour's amazing book. It is called Living in Love, How to Create a Lifestyle of Love, Faith, Bliss, and Crazy-Ass Manifesting. This book introduces us to a powerful 31-day challenge that combines daily love practices to transform lives. From self-love to rapid manifesting, join us as we discover and explore how Kalinda's journey of resilience and self-discovery led to a life-changing path anyone can follow. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Prime 7 Media for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her powerful book. The links are below the interview. Kalinda, great to see you here today. Thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me, Logan. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you. I'm excited to have you on the show. Uh, talk to us a little bit about crazy ass manifesting first, because I'm sure that caught all of our viewers eyes and ears when I said that. What exactly is that? Well, for me, during um, the full on love challenge or the 31 day love challenge, which you spoke of, what I noticed was that things just started showing up with very little effort, uh, very little thought. Um, and what I realized or what I decided why it was happening was because I was putting myself in a very love-filled state. So a high vibration, let's say. I was feeling a lot of love, acting you know, with love, speaking with love, et cetera. And it's my belief that when we want to manifest something, it's often because it'll make us feel better, right? It'll make us feel good. But if you're already feeling really good because you are doing you know, loving things throughout your day, then that's when things just start flowing to you anyways, because you already are feeling like you already have it. And part of the, um, or one of the love side effects, what I call them, was great faith in myself and that always things will work out for me. And I believe too, when you have that faith that things are going to work out and you have faith in yourself, that as well is when things start showing up. So for example, I would think of somebody and they would be at my door a minute later right? Money, money, you know, that, that month that I was doing my challenge and thereafter money just started coming into my life. And I know with manifesting, that's a big one for many people, right? They, they always want more money. And so, you know, things like uh, my rent decreased, I got a bonus at work. We got a raise at work. All of these things were unexpected and they just showed up. And then honestly, less than a year later, I doubled my salary. And I believe it's because I just am living or try to as best I can in a loving state, a very high vibration where I feel good. So I don't need anything else to make me feel good because I'm already feeling great. And that's when things show up for you. That's very, very true. And uh, as the song goes, the greatest love of all is deep inside of you. It's a love that you have for yourself that's so important. And you really do have to love yourself before you can love others. So I think those are you know, messages obviously loud and clear in this book and a whole lot more as well. Your journey apparently began in part at least when you walked into a pole one night and it set you on this path. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So that, I mean, that night changed my life and, and you're right. It started my path of self-development and self-love. So essentially I was glued to my phone. I used to be addicted to the news. And that evening I was walking home from the train station in London, UK. And my, my, you know, my face was glued to the phone and I was walking quite briskly. It was a cold December evening. And you know what? I didn't look up. I didn't look where I was going and boom, I just walked right into a pole and it literally woke me up. Right. And what it did was made me realize that, you know, I'd been coasting in life. Sure, I'd been succeeding and I'd be doing things, but I wasn't quite happy. I remember going home after discovering this massive bump on my forehead or, you know, continuing my way home and looking in the mirror. And I just saw dissatisfaction in my eyes <laughs> besides a massive bump on my head. <laughs> but I thought to myself, well, you know, what's going on here? Things are good. Your life is good, but you're not satisfied. And it was that evening that I just decided, okay, it's about time, perhaps if I focus on what I actually want, creating a life I love, 
what could I do? If I could achieve these things by just coasting, what could I do by actually focusing on things and trying to create a life I loved? Because at that point, I just didn't love my life. And I was done with that. I wanted to love my life. To get off of autopilot, good to get behind the controls yourself, take charge, figure out where you want to go and set a path to get there. The path you have laid out for the readers of your book is a 31 day full on love challenge. And I think that's great because, you know, over the course of a month, you can implement many of the steps that you recommend. So talk to us a little bit about this uh, 31 day challenge. Yeah, absolutely. So that came to me when I started writing my book. Like I knew I wanted to write a book on love, but I didn't want it to be one of those, oh, woe is me, you know, pity books, right? I wanted to create a book that could help people. And and that's basically what I asked. You know, one day I had writer's block and I was sitting in my back garden and I just finally said, okay, Kalinda, what do you want? And what do you want this book to be? And the answers came very quickly. It was, I want to be loved and I want this book to spread love. And I thought, okay, well, how can I be loved? Because I'd reached a point in my, in my life at that time where I, I did have self-love. You know, I'd, I'd, that pole incident was years earlier and I'd continued on that path of self-development, et cetera. And I just reached a point where I'd kind of hit a plateau. And I knew that, you know, I just wanted to go beyond that. I wanted to become the loving being that I I believe we're meant to be, right? And I wanted this book to, to provide that for others. And so I thought, well, how do you become love? And me being a doer, person of action, I went, well, to be love, maybe I have to do love. And that's when it came to me. It was like, I also love a good challenge. So I said, okay, here you go, Kalinda. Give yourself a challenge to do 10 acts of love per day for 31 days. And some of those acts of love were acts of love towards myself, acts of love towards others, and then just acts of love to raise my vibration again, to get me into that loving feeling, to to make love more conscious within or throughout my day. And so, like I said, there were 10 acts. Some of them were multiple times per day. For example, I would send five messages of love to people hug myself at least three times. That was one of my self-love acts. Write down 10 things I love each day. That was one of the love actions is what I call them, just to raise the vibration. Um, And what I found during those 31 days is that, gosh, the, the, the results I did not expect. They were beyond expectation. And, you know, of course, when you are doing so much love or acting with love consciously and deliberately, I think those are two key words that are important, you you just become more blissful, right? Of course, you have sustained periods of bliss, bliss excuse me. And like I said, you your faith in yourself grows. And I also found that I just had this beautiful sense of connection and oneness with everyone and everything. And it was all through just adding love into my life. And when you think about it, I believe love is at the core of everything. Love is the answer to everything. So when you are essentially bombarding yourself with love throughout your day by putting love into action, consciously and deliberately, so many wonderful things happen. Like we mentioned already, the manifesting, the the amazing faith I had in myself, But then the love for myself just grew and grew and grew. And it got to a point where I had so much love that it just kept spilling out. I just wanted to spread it to others. And I caught myself in this perpetual loop of giving love, receiving love, and giving even more love, and then wanting to share that love even further. And so for me, the challenge really moved beyond just creating a lifestyle of love for myself, but the realization that simple acts of love can change the world. I really believe that because if we have enough people acting with love throughout their day, so reacting, speaking, interacting, and just doing loving things, that creates a loving energy around you and it impacts the people you encounter. And if that just spreads even wider, imagine, imagine the possibilities of having a love-filled world. That's the power you're putting out into the universe. You're putting out the power of love by surrounding yourself with love, self-love, and it spreads to others. It's infectious in a good way, of course. And uh, 
I think that's terrific. Let's talk a little bit about how the book connects love with faith, bliss, and wholeness. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, what I found is throughout that challenge is that, you know, my heart just became so filled with love that these emotions bubbled over. And I, I don't know where the faith came from. I think it came from love because I believe love is the source of everything, right? I believe love is omnipresent. I believe it's available to all of us. We just need to learn to let it in. And that's what really um, came to me is throughout those days was that just all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but gradually, some of it was sudden, was like the bliss was sudden. Day one, I felt bliss and I just felt sustained bliss throughout. Not every day. Some days you're going to have your ups and downs. You can't stay in that high state all the time. But what also occurred is that as my love or as love was filling in my heart, there's no room for those fear-based emotions, right? When you are filled with love, our brain can't have conflicting emotions at the same time. So if you are focusing on love throughout your day, um, let's see here, uh, anger, fear, unworthiness, uh, doubt, things like that just don't have room. There's no space for them. And so what happened was that, you know, things like doubt or unworthiness were replaced with faith, faith in myself, faith that I can do that and faith that life will always work out for me, right? It just happened and connection. You know, I would take my dog for a walk and we'd be walking amongst, amongst the trees and I could just feel the buzzing energy of everything around me. And I know it was because I was in that high loving vibration. And so the oneness I felt, you know, we often hear we are all one, we're all connected, but sometimes it's very difficult to actually feel that. But when you are surrounding yourself with love or creating, generating loving energy, that oneness is there. Because again, I believe one is uh, love is one, right? It's what holds us all together. It's what binds us. It's, it's what we you know, where we came from, what we're made of, and what I believe will ultimately just can improve humanity and the world. So another thing that came out of this was my intuition. I mean, I, we always have intuition, but what happened for me was that I trusted it and I acted on it and I could hear it now, right? I didn't doubt it any longer because there was, again, no room for doubt in my mind or my heart. Wonderful. Beautifully said. Before we leave you today, what would you like the folks at home to get from your book? I think that if they find a 31-day challenge too intense, there are three mini challenges in there that I give just a few love actions to do each day for a week. So even if you can just implement one to two to three acts of love per day, maybe one towards yourself, one towards others, and one to just raise that vibration, you will notice a change. Because again, when you are consciously and deliberately acting with love, it's going to change your thoughts, your actions, your beliefs, and that in turn will impact those around you and that will spread. So my, if they can take anything away from it is just implement, you know, two to three love actions per day and watch your life just change for the better. Is the power of love. And it's been very well articulated and explained here today on Spotlight. The name of the book is Living in Love, How to Create a Lifestyle of Love, Faith, Bliss, and Crazy-Ass Manifesting. The book introduces a powerful 31-day challenge that combines daily love practices to transform lives from self-love to rapid manifesting. The book will show you how Kalinda's journey of resilience and self-discovery led to a life-changing path anyone can follow. It's a great book. Uh, the most important love you can have is the love for yourself, and then you can share that love with others. Kalinda, thank you so much for joining me here today on Spotlight. Oh, thank you, Logan. It was my pleasure, and thanks again. Pleasure is all mine. Loved having you on the show. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time, this time until next time, on Spotlight.